three. Cool. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming in today. Uh, I really appreciate you guys coming in on this Thursday on a nice summer night. Uh, this is going to be a great talk. I, I'm sure of it. Um, my name is John H. Guevara. I currently run this small project called Chukimarca. Uh, Chukimarca is a small library project space focused on native Mexican and Latinx contemporary art here in Chicago. Um, I am super excited to do this talk because it's part of the, the program of Ecclesiastes 1-2 by uh, Carlos Salazar Lamar that we have up in the exhibition right now uh, in this space. Uh, so definitely DM or email uh, me, Carlos, uh, to come see the space uh, to the exhibition that's up. Um, it's a really good show. I got the performance that we did last week, got top five at Bad at Sports, uh, number two. So, so that's always great to uh, get recognized for the work that Carlos was doing um, last Thursday, or the work we were doing last Thursday. Um, you guys are here tonight for the Body in Vain, a conversation with Carlos Salazar, Lemont, Will Ruggiero, uh, Ruggiero, sorry, uh, moderated by Marina Hes, he, I'm sorry about that, Marisa, uh, Hernandez Santos. Um, uh, as I said, my name is John H. Guevara. Um, this is this talk, before, before I go further, I do want to acknowledge uh, that we are in uh, ancestral lands of the Council of the Three Fires, which is the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi nations, um, as well as the Miami, Hunchuk, uh, Menominee, Black Fox, Kickapoo, and Illinois nations. Um, that is taken from the library, American Library Association, ran by Tara Kenjakti, uh, who is part of the Seneca Nation and enrolled member of the Hunchuk Nation of Wisconsin. Um, I always think it's important to bring up the, uh, on the land that we occupy is, of course, a uh, of native um, is a native ancestral land, um, and yeah. So this this program's uh, up to. I mean, we scheduled this for an hour. So um, before I go any further, the way this is going to work, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and oh, well, let me say what the 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 bio, the little summary of the of the talk. Um, so in this conversation, the artist Carlos Salazar Lamont and curator Real Ruggiero will unwrap the intricacies of the body of work presented in Salazar Lamont's solo show, Ecclesiastes 1-2, moderated by Latin American scholar Marina Encendez Santos. Uh, they'll explore the context in which the works were produced and the concepts that formally and conceptually shaped the pieces now viewable in Chukimarca. Emerging in the precarious and tense political environment of late Venezuela, Salazar Lamont uh, featured work becomes a bridge that connects underlying cultural structures inherited from Catholicism, uh, the socialist Chavista movement, and the subjectivity of an individual in times of increasing oppression. Um, a little bio of the, of the speakers tonight, uh, Carlos Salazar Lamont is an artist, curator, uh, Artist, curator, and art minister focus on performativity and social engaged art. He has a BFA in sculpture from Unearte 2012, a technical high school degree on fine arts in drawing and painting from the Escuela de Arte de Juárez Cristóbal Rojas, and a dual MA in arts administration and policy and modern contemporary art history in the School of the Art Institute uh, with the support of the New Artist Society Scholarship. Uh, Will Ruggiero is an artist uh, is an art historian and curator based in Chicago, Illinois, and working in modern contemporary Latin American and Latinx new media and socially engaged art practice. He has held residencies at the Chicago Artists Coalition, the Chicago Cultural Center, Independent Curators International, among others, as well as organizing and written for exhibitions, including the Havana Biennial 2015 Lateral Projects. Uh, Marina Hensi, Hensi, I'm super sorry, Marina Santos is an art writer editor and research focused on the cultural history of Latin American modernity, social practice, and the built environment. Her writing has appeared on Hyperallergic 60 Inches from Center, New City, and Southside Weekly. Um, Marina holds a degree in comparative literature from the University of Chicago. Um, and yeah, I guess without further ado, I'll pass it off to Marina. Um, as I said, any question, comments, feel free to put in the chat. Um, I'll be moderating that or get into that. Um, and yeah, enjoy the talk. Uh, Marina, take it away. Hi, 
Hi everyone, I'm Marina Rezende Santos. <laughs> I use pronouns she, her. Um, and yeah, I will emphasize, like John said, uh, just put any questions in the chat if you have them. Um, I think I wanted to start by making some remarks, just dropping some words that I think are important for this show in general. And um, if some of you haven't had the chance to see it yet or don't remember how it is, I think we're going to soon share the screen from Chukimarca website so that we can see what the works we're talking about. Um, so to me, what's interesting about this work, there, there are a few things that really stand out for me and that like help create the narrative that it is. One of which is that it, this is all work that Carlos did in Venezuela leading up to, the, to when he came to Chicago. So it's work that many of us in Chicago haven't known yet. Like, B, I have, and I think most of us have seen Carlos as an art administration student at SAIC and a performance artist, but these works actually have a very strong visual non-ephemeral component. That's what they're meant to do, coming also from a performance practice. So I would love to talk today with Carlos about um, how you came to this practice of creating photo and video, photography and video, uh, that speaks to performance and as I would say it contains a gesture or the action of performance but it tries to do that in a way that's not ephemeral in the way that a performance is a time-based event can be. Um, I'd like to, what I think is important for this is that these are not, these don't appear as performance documentation but really as compositions in themselves, right? There's this something that Will Ruggiero likes, likes to call this Baroque composition very intentionally uh, using chiaroscuro or, or even tenebrism with this like high contrast of deep dark shadows that are really created through the camera. So this is only possible, I would say, through the apparatus of photography and film. Um, the other point that I'd like to make that I think is super important and almost like what's hard to understand and needs to be unpacked through a conversation like this is that on one level, um, this reflects obviously like a religious heritage that is part of cultures in Latin America and Venezuela, a Catholic heritage. So the knowledge of this book, Ecclesiastes, and what it says about uh, everything is meaningless or vanitas. Um, and also a knowledge of art history and not vanitas is in art history. So in, in some ways it's interesting to look at all the works in this show as we go through this conversation as versions, modern versions of vanitas or of paintings that sort of signify the, the ephemerality of pleasure, of flesh, of life, and of anything material in life. Uh, and or as memento mori, which are really reminders of death, that you will die, um, but in a modern interpretation. So it goes to that heritage, it goes to the existential levels of that kind of reflection about your body, but it's also deeply political and um, and that's what's perhaps more, most missed, I think, by someone who doesn't know the context of Venezuela in the past 10 years, or by someone who doesn't, what some products there would mean, or even for someone who doesn't know what it would be to be an activist, a politically active person, as Carlos was, um, in a country that was living a left-wing dictatorship. So in a country where you're confronting all the time, the ideals, like the, even the historical narrative that's implied in socialism and communism and, and its failure and trying to imagine uh, a non-neoliberal alternative to that. And I'll add on to that just to spice it up that what's important for me in my research is that um, I think Latin America has a great virtue and the great burden of not being able to hold some ideals of material progress that somehow the United States have been able to join even as also a colonized nation or having a colonial past. And that makes you confront the sort of the contradictions of modernization and of modernism as an ideal, but also as a problematic mm -hmm. daily. Uh, and that has made its way into art since well in the 20th century, like early in the 20th century. But I think it also means that uh, there, we've been attempting, I think, in our historical ideals. I'm from Brazil, so that's the perspective I'm speaking from. Um, we've been trying to create models that accept contradiction and paradox rather than solving or resolving them. Um, so with all these observations said, so in some ways I think that, for example, in the works that we see in the exhibition and in, in, in Carlos's work, there's both a confrontation with the idea 
of vanitas and we'd say the um, condemnation on the body that's put on by catholic tradition right this idea that your body it, it's something that you have to abnegate throughout your life so that you experience peace and salvation in the afterlife so you have to deny your body and that sort of um, follows up in a dualism of body and mind but at the same time Carlos's practice itself is trying to make the ephemeral into something more permanent and deny part of the vanity. And the fact that these works both work as vanitas, but also try to preserve, I think holds a contradiction that, that is part of this aesthetic that comes from this sort of historical um, negotiation of contradictions. These are my first very heady observations. Um, but I want to get first into the works. I would like for Carlos to say in his own words how these works as vanitas. Like, talk, can you tell us about Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2, um, and how all these works are vanitas from the point of uh, art historical point of view? And then after that, I would like for you to talk about the politics that's present. Um, in each work, or maybe I would like to compare two works, but we can get there. Yes, um, can you hear me well? Yes, yep. okay. So, well, um, this exhibition has uh, one, two, three, four, five, five works in, in place, and one uh, is a performance uh, that we did last week and, and then developed during the this week. Uh, so it's kind of, um complicated to talk about each one maybe we can do it through the the conversation uh but i think uh that all these works uh are vanitas um in a general uh way of speaking um by addressing the ephemerality of life right um some of these works make a uh, very um uh, literal reference to the vanitas. Um, so for those who are not familiar, vanitas is this subgenre of still life that is inspired on the Ecclesiastes first chapter, second verse, which says, e vanitas vanitatum et omnia vanitas, right? So these words, um, all of them address the ephemerality of life. Uh, and because of this ephemerality, the vanity of things that we feel like are uh, very important, very uh, oppressing, something that is like on our shoulders, like power um, or the need of pleasure, the need of wealth, the need of knowledge and wisdom. Um, so that's kind of like the short answer, uh, maybe elaborating more we can go into like specific words like et omnia vanitas that the title is quite uh, explicit but then you see that it has elements uh, like for example symbols of human labor that is one of the uh, iconographic elements of the traditional vanitas um, and also had the withering flowers uh, however I um, maybe will you maybe you can start like going, uh, like sharing the screen. Uh, thank you for that. Can you, I, I can hear you, you have like, a, you are muted. Um, yeah, let me start, let me go to the show. All right. And okay. So, so, so there are some of the specific symbols, but at the same time, I, uh, change some of them for, for for other things that may have like more personal um meaning for me um so uh for example one of the main elements of vanitas is the skull um so i get rid of the skull but i insert myself um as a body that is uh, meant to Which work you like Carlos? Uh, maybe we can uh, show, I was talking about it, Omnia Vanitas in this case, because I um, was explaining like how this word Vanitas. So there's no skull here, like uh, it would be in a, oh, the previous one, yes. Like it would be in a regular Vanitas, but I, I put my body uh, and it's a body that is being um, 
uh, ripped is 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 being uh, cut somehow, right? Uh, as you can see in this work, I have uh, some rings that are uh, pierced in my skin, and I use these rings um, to tie the flowers to my to, to my chest with um, my shoelaces. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so I take some things that are like familiar navaritas, but I trade it by my own body. So that's like kind of like the the modus operandi of this series of work. Uh, some other works like Ictis or um, Fisting, there you can show what some of them. It has like a, also like this video has a specific. Uh, reference to still life when you see like this um like dead food animals like fish or like uh hares or rabbits um or you see fruits and or, or that kind of stuff so this is like a simplification where i just go to one element in this case fish uh and in another work i will use like the chicken and so on so this is a short answer maybe we can start on wrapping as we keep going. Yeah, that's thanks for that. I think that was great for us to be able to start seeing some of the works and to look at this, this just a visual aspect of how they are framed, the kind of aesthetic, the kind of use of color and shadow and, uh, um, and you know, flowers and, and, and dead fish. I think that sort of provides that imagery of the vanitas. Um, and it also shows us how much the skin is engaged in these works and how the, the body itself, I think, appears as ephemeral, transformable, transforming, mm -hmm. fragile body um, in this, the, the, the body appears. I think the skin is really what's showing uh, what the body is. And I, I um, what, whereas your face or your, your, your head never appears in any of them. So it's really, um, that there's this impact of it showing the body or the body parts and in contact with other skins or with tools that can modify, that can pierce it, they can. Um, so I, can we talk about, maybe that's going a little bit in the order that you find when you go into the space um, rather than the chronological order. But I would like to talk about two works in comparison that I see have um, um, political content. One of them is fisting, which is with the chicken. And if you could describe yeah. briefly how that has to do with what was going on in Venezuela. Um, and then if you would like to talk about Ictis or about the work with the first work with the Inklas tattoo um, and how that was a transformation of how you were treating perhaps a similar subject. Um, but, but like with a different involved, political involvement. All right, uh, let's go to fisting. Let's see, sorry, let's go up here. Do you wanna do this in the space, Carlos, this one? Yes, I think that that's okay. So there it is. Uh, the one to the right is fisting. Um, this work, uh, as you can see, it's a picture of my arm going through a chicken. Um, better? So it is um, the result of a series of performances in which I took the chicken and I, I, I took advantage of the anthropomorphic, um, uh, uh, yes, morphology of this chicken uh, to uh, use it as a, like an object of domination uh, or object of aggression somehow, right? So this picture is uh, like, I decided to take like one fragment of a performance uh, in which I went through the chicken like this. And it was like the climax of that performance. And I decided to make this image uh, as a way of like, kind of like summarize um, this series, uh, like concentrated in just one image. Um, so the frame, like the background of this work is we are talking about Venezuela in the last uh, 20 years. Um, back then when I did this work, um, well actually when I did this picture, Charles was already dead, but in the previous years, 
um, we're talking about a Venezuela that has uh, a lot of income, like a state that has a lot of income because of the high oil prices. So Chavez was in power back then and he had a lot of money to spend. And one of the things in which he spent his money was on importing food from Mexico and from Brazil um, and selling it uh, by very low cost, um, probably like cost price or maybe sometimes even free. So, of course, like if, if you are giving food away for free um, or for very, very low price, it's it's very hard to get defeated on elections. However, while Chavez was doing that, he was uh, also destroying the legal frame and changing the institutional structure in a way that would allow him to stay in power forever um, and also destroying the national productive system by nationalization and expropriation and a lot of other stuff. But since he was giving free food for me as an activist and for people who was trying to resist to this process of totalization or authoritarianism, uh, it was uh, uh, like a failed struggle. Um, so one of the, the products that Chavez would sell was the chicken. Um, so, People will line for hours to get this uh, very low priced chicken and for blocks. Uh, so the line for the chicken, like people line for the chicken became an everyday thing. It was like our everyday. Um, and also like in Spanish or in Venezuela, we say to mean like we're lining to get a product. We say we uh, uh, hacemos la cola. It's la cola del pollo. So like la cola del pollo means the line of the chicken. Uh, so there's like a language relation of this thing, like this phenomenon with the word. So for me, this chicken became an instrument of oppression, an instrument of domination. Uh, so with this series of words, what I was trying to do was to subvert the power relation of this object with myself. That is also like this body, right? So there, that's what, why there were like so much violence in, in these performances, in these words, right? So the result is this image that you see here. Mm -hmm. You want to add something to that, Will? Or... Um... No, I think uh, no, I think you've got it. I, I, I also, I mean, what we've talked about before between between us, as you know, as well as Marina, is um, the kind of delicacy that you approach the with the action, right? In that the vulnerability of like both your skin and the chicken skin. I think in the kind of easy tear, but also the gruesomeness of the fact that as actually as your fist is going through it, it's like spinal bone is sticking out. Um, so I think, I think that, um, also how you were saying it, like, you know, haciendo la colita del pollo is one kind of like actual phenomenon of waiting in line for a, a chicken, like literally a chicken. And then we were talking about the interplay that it plays into like, um, a potential power play that could be dominating, you know, submissive mm -hmm. and the haciendo la colita del pollo is also like la cola, like the tail mm -hmm. of an animal. And you're kind mm -hmm. of bringing in, um, maybe like you're flirting with the language, you know, of, of like sexual practices or like deviant practices of, cause you also call it fisting. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a kind of obvious claim. And I think you're kind of, you, the violence is pretty intentional in, in, I think in your, in your language. Yeah. Um, if I can interject, I think it would be interesting to hear Something that fascinated me a lot um, was how, if we could look at each. So that's very interesting because um, this is a work specifically that I think has a different perception for someone who doesn't have that association with the chicken, right? Um, but it also just, it, it also evokes a lot, I think, that of this like sense of violation, sense of transgression, mm -hmm. of like a relationship with something that is food 
Um, and I think I, I would actually be curious to hear what Will thinks, how Will would articulate that together with Funitas as a team that's kind of more closely pursued by some of the other works. Right. Uh, because in some ways I have my own version of how um, that would be in terms of what this material substrate uh, becomes this tool or becomes this weapon for power. Um, right. But I would like to hear what Will has to say and then I have a couple follow-up questions. Right. In, in terms of, uh, that's a, no, that's a really good question. Cause I think when, when Carlos presented me this work, right. I saw it all as kind of together, right. I saw all of the works that he had chosen and in light of looking at the political turmoil of Venezuela and then looking at the inheritance of Catholic ethos. And then he showed me all these works together under kind of, we were looking at it under this, you know, Ecclesiastes one, two in vanity. And then looking at the visual nature of vanity paintings and like, if we just want to be kind of easy right now. And I was just like, what is a really easy vanity painting that I can pull up over here? Sorry, this is really funny, but this has always been one of my favorite ones. Um, like this, this one over here, um, where vanity paintings themselves were objects, right? They, they were about showing off riches and they're showing off wealth and, you can look at the entire social history of vanity paintings in Vanitas as it's really, it's really quite fascinating. And they always have an element, for example, if you see in this one, there's a butterfly because it's the fleeting element of the ephemerality of, of life. But when I saw it, the first thing I thought about was, okay, I'm thinking of chickens and food in vanity paintings. Um, and the same thing with Ichthys, the, the, the video with the fish, right? I saw of I saw a um, a fish kind of living within within um, within a vanity painting. So I thought of what happens in this kind of like political dejection that this food has rotted and my and, and conceptually rotted, um, or conceptually not become food or not edible or in a way against humans or against people. So I think that in a way I started seeing it in that sense um, and kind of like in a horror display of like how vanity paintings were once these like beautiful arrays of, of even though they were human folly, they were kind of beautiful in their collection. I saw quite a, quite a lot of like political depression and a lot of like power in the fact that they were just like, it was just a flopped object. Um, and I think I started thinking of vanity in that sense um, too, if that, you know, if, yeah. Great, right, because I was about to mention Ictis as well. It's a work that I find very interesting because if you can quickly, if you can first look at uh, Rigor Mortis, I think in some ways it's like the most crystalline form of Vanitas is a message that we find in this exhibition. Uh, it's the hands of the same person. One of them has been sort of strangled with a tourniquet and um, lost blood circulation. So it looks like a dead body. It's essentially what happened to a dead body after blood starts circulating. Um, so it kind of makes this very clear parallel against a, a white background. Um, now, if you look at Ichthus, I think there, and especially after talking to Carlos, there are many other topics mixed in there. Um, and it is also has the political content, but it deals with it in a much less straightforward way than uh, the piece of the chicken, than, than which is translated in English to fisting. So if you could talk a little bit about that, Carlos, if you could talk quickly about it, I think it's hard, but it has, it ties in with what I was thinking about. Uh, having to deal and live in and internalize paradoxes in Latin American culture. Mm -hmm. um, and in this, specifically in this case, with the image of Jesus, right? Or with what that would represent in terms of an attitude. So if you could tell me about that. Yeah, actually, well, uh, I think in Chukimarca there's a video. So maybe you can play it. I yeah. hope it's possible. Yes. Um, I'm going to go back. To, I'm going to just stop this and then I'm going to go back to sharing it. All right. Good. Um, so you will see in a couple of seconds this work uh, is you see the screen will be divided into sides. One side has a fish, the other side has my body, right? Um, so in the fish frame, I'm uh, pointing at it and just pressing it uh, until I actually get through it. 
And in the other frame, I'm doing kind of like the same in my chest. Uh, so I don't go through myself, but I leave like a, um, a mark, how you say? Like a, a mark, uh, like a yeah. puncture mark. Yes, a puncture mark. So, so in this work, uh, I use the fish as a way to refer to the Christian symbol of Jesus Christ, which is a fish. Uh, and the origin of this symbol is because uh, ictis, uh, which means fish in Greek, is an acronym of Jesus Christ, Son of God. Uh, so the problem, my problem with the figure of Jesus Christ um, is that it is a model um, based on martyrdom, uh, self-sacrifice, um, poverty, and also it's like a messianic type of leadership, right? Uh, and for me, this model of self-sacrifice of po and poverty and becoming a victim to reach salvation, for me, it's a failed model that is embedded in the Latin American culture. So for me, it's, it's, that's problematic because as a Latin American, as a Venezuelan, and, and, and as a part of a whole region that has had so many challenges during the last centuries, I can say that one of the challenges we have is like how to beat poverty, how to uh, develop our society uh, and our econ uh, economic and political system. But if your model of realization is being poor and being in self-sacrifice, you're like, how are you ever going to achieve that? It's just contradictory. So the only way that we can actually uh, overcome uh, or or failures and uh, and yes and like the the, the past uh, experiments that didn't work is by actually revealing against that is is saying why should I sacrifice myself why should I uh, become a victim why should I end up crucified and also reject the messianic uh, leaderships as well um, and for me it was also a criticism that is, is not uh, explicit, but for me, it was also uh, uh, a criticism towards the socialist model that was being uh, implemented in Venezuela, because uh, I remember back in the time, I, I, I had like this, I was impressed by uh, hearing uh, Hugo Chavez saying his nine hours long TV show every Sunday, that being rich was something bad, right? And then you go to the Bible and you find that uh, Jesus Christ say things like, first will a camel go through um, the eye of, a, or the hole of a needle before um, a rich man or a wealthy man would um, reach the, the rich heaven, right? So, so separating the criticism towards uh, figures that have accumulated a lot of money and power uh, in very uh, like um, uh, problematic methods, right? In general, as a society, it is important to think that it is is something uh, it is legitimate to wish for wealthiness. It is legitimate to to wish for becoming a wealthier society and and then change focus from the people who who were our victimaries to a model of how do we become wealthier how do we become uh, 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 yes a, a more a, a, pros, a pros, prosperous society a, a thriving society yeah yeah Um, well, if you have something to say, um, otherwise I would like to talk about the piece, the two pieces with the Inca statues that you did sure, yeah. first. Yeah. The Memento uh, Mori Vanitas. Yes. And then also the one that was done on Thursday. I think it might be a point where we can talk about 
so I'm wondering if a contradiction of the idea of like there's a body that's healing there, which is interesting, right? Even though it's being there, it's like methodically perforated and hurt. Um, and also, as you say, it's but it's at the same time that you heal, you're coming closer to death. Um, but I would like to talk about the connection of that to you repeating a work or continuing this work last Thursday, since these works were done between 2013 and 2016, am I right? So they would seem like early works or older works, but somehow there's this continuation through producing this show here and through doing this work on Thursday. And that relates to the line that you chose of Ecclesiastes. Uh, but also I'd like to talk about these um, with relation to if we can get to that, if we can go that deep to models of history that we've been talking about and that are implied through certain political doctrines, because I think that makes the existential point of our own mortality and the existential point of salvation after, and the religious existential point of salvation after uh, death and everything also political because it relates to versions of how the history of humanity should or does develop. So okay, I'll let you guys take that. Carlos, do you want to explain just what the performances are? Uh, the performances, do you mean Memento Mori? Yeah, just like what the triptych is. Yes. Um, so um, uh, in this work, uh, I um, I ask um, tattoo artists to write the words Memento Mori and Vanitas in my skin using an inkless, inkless tattoo uh, machine, right? So in other words, to make an inkless tattoo, a tattoo that is meant to disappear, right? So you see in the trick take the pictures of the English tattoos when they were just done, and then there is the documentation of the healing process. So the performance goes from the moment where the, the tattoo is made until the moment where the tattoo is, is finally healed, almost leaving no trace, which is like a little bit shorter than a week. So um, I'm seeking, I, I seek to, to uh, take advantage of the paradox created here to create like this poetic effect of, for example, talking about uh, death by a process of healing, right? It's like the paradox that happens when we, we realize that as we are healing, we are actually closer to our own death, right? That's one part of it. And the other part is the English tattoo as something that normally a tattoo will be something thought to become permanent. Uh, but actually this is, a, this is a tattoo that is meant to disappear just as life. Life feels like something that, that is so heavy, so, um, so important, right? Like, uh, but actually it's something that is uh, like the Ecclesiastes would say is, is vapor is something that just vanishes, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so what you will see in the gallery is like these two images of the English tattoo, and then you will see the third panel that is the process of healing, basically. So, why did I do this work? Uh, what can I say about this is, um, Well, this is a long story, um, and it's like a, a lot of reflection behind this. It's like when I was seeing everything coming down in my country, I was trying to understand what is the origin of this. Like, I wanted to use my art to address the core of 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 this problem, right? Maybe too ambitious, but in that moment, I, that's what I wanted. Like, trying to to understand that. And that's how I started to address um, the Catholic structures that for me uh, or social and political uh, structures were just like a, a transformation of the same Catholic structure that wasn't working for us. Um, so 
in this way, we're talking about um, socialism or like the modernist ideology in a, in a wider um, way. Um, it's like something that, that is, is, is meant to be an understanding of the evolution of our human spirit towards a realization, right? Um, while so, uh, while Christian, uh, Christianity is also like you have to behave in certain ways to evolve as a human being and eventually find salvation in heaven, right? So the difference is that um, in the political ideological one is a earthly it's an earthly heaven it's a heaven in in earth where everything's perfect and everyone is like brothers and sisters and so on um, and the other one is just like metaphysical but actually um, they are just like the, the same structure that it, it is it happens in the enlightenment when when the the like the philosophers uh, discard the religion and then create like the the, the modern um, ideology, but they, inadvertently, what what they do is repeating this this scheme, right? Um, so for me, it, it was important to to deal with that somehow to address that, and then I also start to to see uh, some contradictions in our in our own society is. It's like, okay, so we come from this um, process of colonization. And like when you read Carlos Fuente, uh, Carlos Fuentes, su libro, From the Good Savage to the Good Revolutionary, he says that one of the conflicts that we have in Latin American society is we are descendants of both the colonized and the colonizers. We're both. And very often there is this. Uh, like the, 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 the political dialectics are focused on being one or the other, right? Uh, but we have to remember that we are the colonizers as well, or or, or we are colonized as well, but, but we, we are both, we are the victims and the victimaries. And understanding that, it is important for us to kind of like make, make a, an internal truth that will allow us to make a a next step towards the like uh, a model of society that is more uh, productive or that is um, uh, that works better, just to say our you know. So, so this this conflict is expressed a little bit in this work in which I kind of like criticize or attack the Christian models, but at the same time I embrace it. Right? Uh, is is like this contradiction of being uh, like understanding that we have these Christian uh, structures in our head, but we cannot escape them, right? Because it's our culture after all, right? So um, this is like my, my <laughs> reflection frame that gave birth uh, these words, right? So in this specific work, uh, I was thinking that the, the starting point to start this process of re-understanding, re-signifying our own culture was going to the point of, of the awareness of our own debt as expressed in the Ecclesiastes, like the Vanitas, as something that we are here in this world, we are going to disappear, we only have this one life, and yes, we can achieve all this um, uh, power or glory or a pressure, the pressures of life or everything, but, but this is going to disappear. So. So understanding that allows us to to approach to to politics or or, or life in general in a more like a stoicist way, uh, which is like a, a approach with which I identify myself. Did that make sense? It did. Thanks, Carlos. I know I asked like it was a big lift <laughs> to go all that way and. Uh, I realized it starts to depart a little bit from the images that we're seeing there and. I am actually deeply interested in everything you're saying, but so uh, John is asking here if anyone has any questions now because we're about 10 minutes until eight um, so that we can continue talking or would anyone like to see or hear about any other work in specific that we could look at through screen sharing? And if not, I think um, I would like to leave the rest of the time for Will to talk a little bit about 
what it was to curate and select these works or to receive the works that Carlos was proposing to show. Um, and even a little bit about the, sticking a little bit more to the experience of being in the gallery of the visual composition of the works, if there's anything we would like to say. Well, I'll wait for, do you want me to wait for questions first? Yes, let's, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, if anyone has any questions. I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, Carlos de la O has a question about the forms of the pictures, so you can unmute yourself and ask us if you'd like. Or can you rate it? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Adelante, Carla. Pero acuérdate de quitar el mute. Ah, ¿qué tipo de impresión son las fotografías? Uh, just, uh, what type of impression are the photographies, since Carlos asking. Um, what kind of print. Carlos yeah. is asking. Yes, it's, it's just like digital photographic print. I use glossy because I like this kind of like shiny finish. And it is also it like... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> because it's, yes. It, it looks nice. <laughs> it's Baroque. No, but all, it's like, it's yeah. funny because most artists prefer matte or like semi-gloss max, but you use the glossy there. Makes it hard to photograph. Yeah, yeah I like that. I, I, I like that. I like that finish. I think it also makes it look more like sharp. Um, yeah, you get the very deep blacks, right? And like, yeah, the shininess, like this, that shiny chicken in your hand. I think it works really well with glossy. Yeah. Any other question? Carlos, one thing we did, so last Thursday, Carlos' um, performance, he did another inkless tattoo, just like with uh, Memento Mori and Vanitas, uh -huh. but with another, but with a verse from the Ecclesiastes, verse nine, that says, um, can we read it here? I think I have it open here. Yeah. Um, so it was interesting because it is a line that talks about everything is repetition, right? What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. Yes. Um, and there was something deeply meta-linguistic about it because you were repeating this performance and this concept from seven years ago and from when you were in Venezuela and speaking from now, 2020, um, in some ways parallel moments in your life. Um, or I don't know, the world is fucked up again. Pardon yeah. my French, but um, <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting to me. That's like you just you just picked out another phrase. That's kind of uh, to me. This verse is another expression of vanitas as vainness, right? Of life and of history. And it also expresses a version of history that's very much that's dangerous and hostile and uh, very much not accepted by socialists and Marxist historiography because it, it talks about the repetition of the same which is a model of history wherein revolution is impossible right you can't change status quo you can't do the quantic jump towards an, an, a different kind of system yes um in this work i did another uh english tattoo in my chest um and the what the verse that is written there is the Ecclesiastes first chapter, verse nine, which is seven verses after the one, two, that is where the Vanitas work comes. And it's done seven years after the other performance. Uh, so by doing this, I not only reiterate the content that is, um, uh, Latin in the Ecclesiastes book, but I'm also referencing referencing my own work. Uh, so, so by by that I do like this cyclical, meta meta textual conversation with my own work and and also um, extend it in, instead of of just being like two separate performances. Then it becomes uh, seven years long performance right so um i also like the fact that that 
in the pictures that are being taken, uh, which I also took did the documentation of the healing process, then what you see is an older body, right? So this, this like my, my aging uh, starts um, reinforcing the content and the poetics of this work. Mm. Do we have any more questions, John? Marina, did you want me to return to your question at all? Yeah, that would be good. I think I would like to go back to like, if you go into this exhibition, which to me, I was like, oh, it's just like a Latin American middle class, lower class living room. And then you're like, no, that's just what your camera looks like, <laughs> which is pretty great. Um, I was like interpreting it um, and thinking about yeah. like, how is this context. But I'd like to, uh, I, I would like to like, specifically have you speak, yeah, about your curatorial process. And just remind everyone, like, if you walk into this exhibition, what you see is just like, these glossy pictures of skin and like skin yeah. that's sort of like hurt through. So in some ways, without engaging with all this political and historical context that we're talking about, it, it's just, it, it's visceral images that will evoke death, that will evo evoke healing, that will evoke contact of skin with the skin of another, of, of a dead chicken or uh, I mean, right fish, away, right? Right yeah. away when we, when we, when you, go into the space, you're kind of hit, obviously, with a fisted chicken. Um, and like you said, the kind of glossy materiality of Carlos's photos, but then there's a kind of like, it seems asynchronic to have a carpet and then a couch. And then um, obviously, yeah, Ictis here, I'll show it over here, Ictis itself, you know, the, the fish, um, the, 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 is, is, is a still life in itself, right? Um, in how we set it up. Um, but I think one of the main things is also that when we were thinking about it and we were like, wow, these are kind of really stark images to look at when you walk in, we also thought of the fact that like having a, a almost like domestic-like space that Chukimarca has, right? Even though it has really white walls um, in, this, in these photos, and you have the couch. I think we were talking about the fact that so many of the images, because they're uh, based not just in like body performance, you know, um, historic body performance, but also Catholic reverie in a way, um, um, sacrifice and all those kind of, um, the visual basis for them were so much about like empathizing with like the, the martyr or empathizing with the saint. And, you know, there's blood in some of the, of the works and the flesh, I think we were like, well, how about if people themselves, you know, you become so aware of your body at your own place, at your own uh, domicile, right? You know, as you're sitting on the couch, you become aware of your skin. You could, um, where I think we were, we were seeking for that to happen. Um, so, so yeah. Um, does that answer your question? It yeah. does. Yeah, I was just being another person to ask you questions. Um, I was super intrigued, like the first thing that I was reading about this is of course the press release or the, the, the language uh, about, which I assume you wrote, Will, but maybe you'll get together, I don't know. Uh, and I was interested in the use of the expression performance imbued photography and video, just because I know it relates to like our conversation about photo performance, yeah. but also because of what imbued. At first I was like, imbued, is that the right word? And then I ended up because I'm an editor and that's what I do. But I ended up. Oh no, my works, my words come back to me. But um, at the same time, no, but I said, I like it because imbued to me is like it's animated by it or suffused with it, which yeah. I think suggests a little bit of the experience that you're trying to create there. Yeah. And also the word, you also said another thing about the release. You talk about, I think, a contradiction between body and matter or body and material, which is super interesting because you're not highlighting dualism of body and mind. Yeah. But a body, which is itself so unmaterial, but like supposedly animated by spirit or life, on matter, material, which so in so many ways what do you encounter by looking at these pictures without a face or in, in the other elements that he, that Carlos interacts with, like the flower, the fish, the chicken. Yeah, so, I think that's the last thing I'll say today. No, no, no um, oh, thank you for that. I mean, I think that one of the first things that we were talking about in this term photo performance, right, which which isn't that popular here, as we were talking about, was that it's performance performance in photography or the other way around, but really 
that the effect that it creates is virtual, that we understand that the action, because there is a, uh, a, a gesture to performance, like you said, outside of the, photo of the photograph, kind of lives in and out of it. Um, and, and so I, we imagine the kind of action living virtually. Um, and what I mean by that is just outside of it. Um, and then so when I, when I saw the, the, the reason I, worked, I used the word imbued is because I didn't want to use the word photo performance right away in, um, in a press release because it's not often used here. So I, um, I kind of just talked about that way. But I think the, only, the other reason I didn't want to use the word duality is because I didn't right away want to bring up a Catholic kind of body ethos. Um, I didn't really like, want to fully go into like Catholic purity because I think so much of what Carlos is dealing with, it's, is is skin and the body and kind of like as existentially just kind of um like a soul force um in itself and um he really is non-transgressive to me like he the body does not transgress the body isn't is um it's not like a still life you will not be saved by um it's non uh it's non-messianic so i think that that was one of the original things um that I was thinking about. When I thought of body, I thought of a Catholic body, you know, a, a body to be saved. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know, like in, in Latin America, you say for performance and it's something that is uh, like, everyone will understand at least in like in the art world. And, and we can use that word in part because of language, because in Spanish, performance uh, means automatically performance art. Here in the United States, or like in English talking, you, you, you need to differentiate performance art from all the other performances. Right. So, so for us, uh, the, the people who is interested in performance, like in photo performance or video performance, uh, it is very important the, um, the performance art component of what we're doing. That is, that is us, that we're doing it ourselves because uh, our identity is building up the content that we are trying to achieve with these works, right? So, so here in the United States, I guess, is, is something that is a little bit more like a, of a given. Um, and it's also because like performance means so many, so many things. So it's a, so the thing with this for performance is that it's, it's very, maybe not doesn't make sense uh, in translation, but it makes a lot of sense in, in the Portuguese and Spanish uh, environment. Um, I think we had a question, right, John? No, no questions. It, it, uh, Marina was just asking, um, just the performance in view. Thing. That's the only question I saw um, that's on here. Uh, but if there's any last minute questions, I don't know if you um, guys have any last minute thoughts. Um, Let me just see. Uh, let's see. Cool. Yeah, I, I think lastly, something I'll say is that uh, Carlos presents a really kind of interesting uh, point where the, the kind of existential approach is very much coming to Latin America from um, that, that paradox that you were talking about, Marina. Um, and the paradox of like accepting an inheritance, right? But also living with it and maybe living off of it. Um, in that it's the uh, politics of, of purity don't really exist and um, kind of approaching another space is I think for you, Carlos, or maybe regressing to like the simplest of spaces, I think is is something that you're going for. Um, yeah. But by the way, um, Erica is uh, noting that I made a mistake. Uh, I say Carlos Fuentes, and I meant Carlos Rangel. Carlos Fuentes is the author of Terra Nostra. Carlos Rangel is is uh, on our kind of like. Oh, that's what I thought. <laughs> Sorry, and, and I've been <laughs> doing it. Like, I've been doing it for quite a while, and I was <laughs> like, "Fine, but well, it sounds weird." But, but Erica pointed out. Sorry for that. It's, it's Carlos Rangel. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Erica. Carlos for, Rangel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, we say when the show ends and how people can visit.
Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the show ends uh, at the end of the month, August 30th. Uh, definitely DM or email uh, Tricky Marca, info at trickymarca.com or just DM us uh, to schedule a visit. Um, it should be fun now. Uh, we are uh, asking you guys to wear masks um, and limiting three people, um, but definitely come through. Uh, the space is open. It's an experience to just walk into the space, uh, into the, the warehouse that Tricky Marca is is located in so it's definitely um worthwhile to see the see and experience the the photos uh in that in that space and um and yeah come through um but yeah and just a note of gratitude to you john by the way from from our from our part um for helping us put together the the show in offering us your space yeah yeah uh thank you guys yeah so i guess if, if you guys have been living under a rock we did go through a pandemic <laughs> So the show kind of um, is is very is dear to my heart uh, going through since like the early this year uh, with Will and Carlos. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Marina, um, for going through this process of how to make uh, art conversations and art making, uh, exhibition making, program making all under uh, safety precautions and a pandemic that uh, the body in itself is 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 you know making people ill <laughs> um so yeah hope everyone's safe i think we kind of there if, if if we could get a thumbs up with that um if there's any 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 question just email info at trickymarca.com for the letter okay hope to see you guys at the space if you come yeah thank you guys thank I, I, can i can i publicly thank all of you guys uh First of all, John, for giving us the space and supporting. Uh, I think this is an amazing initiative. Uh, it's tough. He's practically doing it all by himself, and it is a lot. Um, and thank you that. So thank you for that, John. And thanks, Will, because Will has been working on this project with me like for five months or so, and he has worked really hard. Uh, and and not only this show, like he has been a great support the last seven years since I met him. Um, and so for real, uh, Will, yes, I'm, I'm really, really thankful. Um, and also you, Marina, for your interest in my work and for your sharp analysis and, and your moderation. And I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. You guys have a good night now. Thanks for inviting me to Carlos. We sure we'll meet up after this for sure. Um, hey, also, thanks, Raul. Raul, too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> for Raul. Espacios. Yes, thanks for all your support, man. Yeah. Right. What a pleasure to work with you again. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Raul. Thank you for this past. You have been our great collaborators, program collaborators uh, on the virtual world. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and end this. You guys have a good night. Um, good night, everyone. And thank bye. you all again. Okay, ciao, ciao. Nos vemos. Ciao, bye.